Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd down here at Advantage One RV today, or as I like to call it in-house, A1A, Broke Ridge Avenue, for all my vanilla ice fans out there. I've been doing the six shooters a lot lately. I think the more dad I get, the more six shooter, hey, sport, I keep throwing out there. Regardless, you don't care about that. We've got a double slide Chateau gasser coming in here, and it's got some beautiful curb appeal. It's not in flawless condition though. And here's what I'm talking about. And I want to get this stuff right out of the way, right up front. And then we'll dive into all the good stuff because it is more good than bad, but it's got a couple significant items you need to know. So if you're, if you look at the reflection on just that, just good looking fiberglass on this, you can see there's a couple spots where it gets a little bit wavy. The RV has had several areas of water penetration which is fancy dancy talk for unfortunately the rv's had a couple leaks on the inside of the rv in a couple areas you'll see some rippled wall panels i'll try to point out a little bit of that as we go just to let you know i'm shooting you straight on this stuff like here's one of those points and there are several in the rv uh i, I absolutely recommend getting a look at an rv like this in person because a lot of what I'm seeing isn't really translating well to camera. Like right there, that's a more obvious spot. Not all of it is as obvious in this RV, but I want you to have the best idea possible of what you're getting into before you go driving down here. Uh, similarly, pretty much all of the leatherette vinyl uh, surface in this RV, whether it's the, uh, the two cab chairs or the um, uh, sofa right there, they, uh, the, the skins have, have not fared well. It's, it's sort of like the skins have a little bit of RV, I don't know, skin cancer to them, unfortunately. Now, that being said, those are things you can get some slip covers for, uh, from like an embroidery shop. You'd be surprised how cheap that is by comparison. Maybe keep that in the back of your head, because then you can kind of customize the colors you like. Uh, another, I think, significant factor for consideration I noticed, I came over here, I checked the hours on the generator, 39.4 hours on the generator. Okay, pretty low. So I went to fire it up, and I don't know if you're hearing that. Generator fired right up. But give it about 10 seconds, and right there it goes. Generator will turn itself back off. Now, sometimes that will happen if an RV doesn't have enough fuel, because the, the, the engine and the generator share a fuel cell. So um, RV designers have it set up so that the generator won't suck gas once it gets below a quarter of a tank. So you can't leave yourself stranded. But this has got about a half tank in it. So I think the RV, or the generator just hasn't been used enough. It probably needs to go through a small engine repair shop and just needs a quick tune-up. So it's got the, uh, you know, areas where it had leaked and it is now sealed, but you can see the historic delamination and some of the signature of that inside in several areas of the RV. We've got the uh, vinyl, which could be covered up fairly price effectively with a slip cover. And we got the generator that probably needs to go through a small engine repair shop, maybe a couple hundred bucks to do that. Those I think are the significant areas of concern on this RV. Beyond that, this is actually a pretty sweet rig. And if those concerning points uh, are disqualifiers for you, like, no, no, I was looking for more of a Hakuna Matata problem free philosophy out of one of these things. I get it. That's why I go out of my way to hit it right away. So if that does mean this is a disqualifier. At the very least, leave us a little comment that says thank you or like the video. Subscribe if you haven't and know that we're always going to shoot you straight on this stuff. Now, uh, it is kind of nice that over any of the general walkable carpeting, whether it's in the cab uh, here in the living room or back in the bedroom, somebody put down some of that um, little, I don't know, just, uh, what do you want to, what is, oh my lord. It's it's hot and I know I'm a little dehydrated right now, but I, I straight, I forgot the name for this stuff. Oh my lord, somebody help me out. What is that called? I'm going to move on. You know what it is. Uh, I'm not helping. Anyway, let's take a look at all the storage because that is actually, I think, something this RV does unbelievably well. And if you notice, there is like a forward entertainment center with like half bunk. That There is a single overhead sleeping space that does slide open. It's different. It's unconventional. I think it's very cool. You notice too how there's an additional little heater built right onto the, the kitchen fascia there. And then around this corner, there is a very good pantry space that's just at a position that I cannot really get any sort of good still photos on it. But thankfully, video allows us to do what the Radio Star could not, which is probably why video killed the Radio Star. I like the cross breeze windows. This thing has awesome visibility. Whether you're going down the road or at a destination, 
everywhere you look, you have good visibility here. Um, that is an easy up, uh, down, kind of like, you see how there's a single support leg for that dinette, then it brackets to the wall. It just swings up and down, simple and easy, but it's a lot more of a no knee knocker for a, uh, a long leg, a clod hopper like me. That bed uh, in that overhead cab area, that slides open nice and easy, by the way. And if you wanted to, you could take the mattress out of there and use it like a drawer. That is, uh, I mean, if you think about it, this is a 100-inch wide-body RV. You figure our walls are uh, about two inches, maybe an inch and a half. So you figure, let's just say four inches. We'll, we'll sacrifice four inches off that. You have an eight-foot-long sleeper there. Nice, long, tall, adult-sized, or that's long enough you could probably put things like fishing poles in there without needing to break them down. We are in a Ford chassis. Uh, up front here, you've got your kind of, uh, you know, entertainment system. I, I'm sure that, that well, it is navigation also, but as old as this is, it probably needs all kinds of updates. Typically speaking, I actually just typically uh, navigate off my phone. And there are so many uh, RV navigation apps out there now. Like, um, oh, what's that one that's coming with all the new Thor stuff? Crap, I am just striking out on names of things today. This would have been really handy. I'll, I'll try to edit the text on the screen right there uh, if, if I remember. Um, this is bugging me. Uh, hold on, I gotta look it up. Togo, Togo RV. That's the name of that app I was trying to think about. That's that's a very common, newer, more popular one, and you can actually get a lot of different discounts through that, through your subscription. But um, cool thing about stuff like that is like, if you just do your normal phone GPS, it might navigate you under a low hanging bridge that a normal car would go under just fine. But you can program in the dimensions of this coach so that you don't have that uh, kind of conflict. Um, also, before I, Blanked on the name Togo RV. We were looking at the heated power side mirrors that are up there. Obviously a nice handy feature. I just noticed that AC cover's missing one of the corner screws, but thankfully that is just not a big deal. That's just a screw. I don't see any issues as a result of it. Again, this is a little different, but that extra little uh, electric space heater, a little fireless place, if you were, can do a heck of a job of saving you from a lot of propane burn. Now, there are no heat vents in the floor. Classic RV still had a little bit of carpeting in the living room, but there's actually a lot of people who go, I don't get the big deal why people don't like carpet in, in, in the RV. I like that my feet don't feel cold all the time. Well, to each their own, you know? And you didn't really get a good look at this before, but the, uh, the refrigerator uh, is actually over here in the dinette slide. So the kitchen is actually split and you walk through it. But I tell you, one of the things that really makes this one work for me, and again, by the way, there's a couple areas in the RV. There's another one back in the bedroom I'm gonna show you that the the where the water kissed the interior, you can see it. But these two giant windows over here, it makes the living room look and feel large, but you can always just pull those double, uh, it's a day and night shade, which is nice to give yourself some privacy. And over here, we got the bathroom on the left. And again, I don't know how well it's translating onto video. The floor is crowning here a little bit. What that means is that it is kind of sloping off to the side, sort of like the shoulder of, of a road, you know what I mean? Which it shouldn't be doing. It means that there has been some water exposure in the laminated floor right there. And I can feel that it is a bit soft, but I'm walking on it, standing on it with one foot right now. I'm just not at a good angle to try to show you that on camera. So it is still load bearing. It just has unfortunately happened. I like this bathroom layout. I like that dual entry door right there to get you through uh, either the hallway or the bedroom. And what's kind of cool is there's dual sliding privacy doors. There is a sliding door to close this off. Then there's a sliding door to close the hallway off and you and they're separate doors. So you can always have full privacy in the bedroom. And I like how it actually has a latch right there. I'm gonna spin you around real slow just to show you. This is actually a really nice linen cabinet space here uh, in the bathroom area. Now the master bedroom back here has a slide out. This is a camp queen size, which is required to make the bed still function in transit. We're gonna take a look with the slides closed in road mode action, just a moment. I did notice though, the uh, the two remote controls. You see that? How they got them kind of velcroed up? That's a mine and a yours arrangement. That is something that my wife and I did at home. We've got a nice long couch, which I love to stretch out on, but inevitably uh, my wife will have the remote. She'll get us watching something and then the show ends and I don't want to watch whatever stupid thing is on after that. But the remote's all the way down at the other couch or at end of the couch. And I mean, it's too far. Am I right, people? So I just take a nap instead. But we got ourselves a second remote so that we always have one within reach. That what that and that makes sense until my daughter, my little almost 11 year old agent of chaos 
decides that she wants to ruin that plan by somehow always leaving both remote controls where nobody can ever reach them. Love my daughter to death, but uh, she has this way about things. My daughter's so cool. She's my best friend. Now again, there's a couple areas where the RV has had some water exposure and it doesn't show up well on camera. I can get you up close here where you can see, I think you can see a little bit of that wrinkle in time right there. And it does look like it translates right down through the wall here. And there is a softer spot there. Overall, like, here's, I, I guess, here's the way I can say it. Here's my impression of this RV. I think somebody bought this and had a good time, but they didn't reinvest in the RV. They didn't give back. They only took from the RV. And unfortunately, a couple leaks or something occurred. So they panic, flipped out of it, got something else or just quit camping. I don't know because there's no Carfax for camping. I'm trying to do CSI for camping over here. Um, owners two or three or whoever went through, used it had a ball unfortunately some of that use like the vinyl over here has shown itself but they went through and sealed it up they made sure that whatever owner number one did didn't progress any further because we've had some some wicked rain around here if it was still leaking i would have a pretty good idea i don't believe that's the case i think that it needs a couple seat covers and i think it needs a, a generator tune-up and then it just needs to hit the road that's that's my impression. I could be wrong. And again, I really, really, really recommend you come visit the RV in person. Form your own opinions. I've got an educated idea, but I don't have a guarantee of here's the history and here's what you're going to run into. I'd like you to form those ideas yourselves, but I want to at least set you up and give you the tools so that you can hit the ground running and not have to retrace all the things I've already figured out or think I have figured out. I don't know. All right, so it's time for the road mode test. I think I need to begin that by, uh, I, I wish I wasn't exactly parked right up here next to the road, but uh, I can't avoid some things. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I wasn't trying to be a jerk. I was just testing the horn. Anyway, you get the idea. The horn works. I have this thing with honking the horns in RVs. I don't know why. It's just fun. So if you're the driver, you spin yourself around and the slides are closed. This is what we're going to be looking at right here, just so that you can visibly see kind of the difference. Now, nice thing about this being a wider body and not being a super deep slide it's very comfortable very easy to walk through here which is something i enjoy now this little exchange looks a little tight but frankly you just slip through it like absolutely nothing obviously we already saw the bathroom is accessible on the left and again this is why most motorhomes with bed slides have camp queens because if it was a long queen you'd have to fold the mattress to be able to close the slide. Uh, but with the Camp Queen, I guess if you had to climb in here overnight, you could make it uh, pass a Cracker Barrel test. And I've talked about it a bunch of times, but isn't it crazy how a paint package on an RV makes it look so good, even after so many years? I mean, they're a lot of money to get it to up front for sure. But the longer you have it, the more impact that paint package seems to have because this thing it, it still it still has all sorts of curb appeal right here. And again, I, I've made no secret about the fact that it's got some D-Lamb spots on it. Now, normally I would go through and open every single baggage door for you so you can see the storage. Unfortunately, most of these baggage doors don't have holdbacks. So what I'm going to do is uh, probably shortly after this segment concludes, I'm going to just kind of splice in some photos of those so I don't make you mo- Whoa, whoa, sorry, what? Whoa, what? How did I miss that? Probably standing at the front of the RV, I couldn't see it. Okay, well, it doesn't look like these are broken. It looks like somehow that got like six inches off center. I would think that could be adjusted. I'm going to have to go get with my consignment manager to verify if he was aware of that uh misalignment on the awning and uh well, well i don't know i guess i'll have to report back from there because that caught me by surprise i am sorry i didn't catch that sooner but standing at the front corner of the rv just kind of the the direction the optical illusion i didn't detect that uh any sooner again though i'll have you some some looks at the baggage compartments uh in still photo form here and then we'll hop up to the roof
But the roof is actually pretty confidence inspiring because uh, I can tell you, it went through a full proper peel and seal and very recently. And one of the reasons I can tell you that is like, if you look around this, around every single fixture, around every single place that you see sealant, the sealant is all nice and bright, it's fresh, and there's a very white, clean strip or circle all the way around everything. That means that it was scrubbed clean and then allowed to dry and then resealed exactly how it's supposed to. You can't put sealant on top of old sealant or dirt and expect it to hold. It's just not going to do well. You'll think it's, it, it'll look fine, but it won't actually seal very well. This has been done properly. I like the roof vent covers up here. The AC shroud was actually painted to match the sidewalls. A little bit of that has flaked off. That's mostly out of sight, out of mind. I guess that's up for you to determine how important that is, but that's everything. Everything that I've shared, it's up for you to determine how important it is. The other thing I want to mention up here, this is a laminated roof. If any of the leaks had ever compromised it, there'd be a big old soft spot. I've walked around the roof three times now. I haven't found anything like that. Very solid underfoot. 